need to bet on your strengths and don't give a fuck about what you suck at. You're gonna, uh, way too many people in this room are gonna spend the next 30, 40 years of their lives trying to check the boxes of the things that they're not as good at and that you're gonna waste a fuck load of time and lose. I highly recommend auditing yourself or if you have no fucking empathy or EQ or self-awareness, then find somebody in your family or friendship that does and let them tell you who you are. And once you believe that, either for yourself or someone else told you, go directly, all chips, all into that because that is the only possible way, in my opinion, watching from the outside, that is, let me rephrase, that is a very highly likely way of over-indexing because the truth is, if you wanna be an anomaly, you've gotta act like one. How do you get money to do what you love? You don't. Right? I lost a load of money when I started doing what I loved. What you do is you position yourself to succeed. So for example, if you're doing something else and you, and you want to do this thing you love, you do it after hours. You work nine to six, you get home, you kiss the dog, and you go to town. Right? I mean, you start building your equity and your brand and whatever you're trying to accomplish after hours. You, everybody has time. So, you know what I mean? I mean, if you want this, if you want bling bling, if you want to buy the jets, if you want to do work. That's how you get it. I think there's massive confusion around entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship sucks. I mean, it's lonely, it's high risk. Like, it's, there's a ton of bad days being an entrepreneur. Not to mention 98% of entrepreneurial ventures are gonna fail. So there's gonna be a really bad day in your future. Um, you know, hopefully not for you. Um, for any of you. And you know, for me, I don't, you know, I think this is a very personal question. I, I think it's how you're wired. I'm so all in entrepreneur, I prefer the pain. I think one of the reasons I love the Jets so much is because they bring me so much pain. You know, I, I love the climb. To me, the setback is exciting. I love when something goes wrong. It's where I shine the most. Um, but that's not for everybody, right? I mean, it can be very difficult. And when you start affecting your life and your loved ones and all the other things, it can get real nasty. To me, the way I handle things, even in the few rare days when I really struggle, I take a real step back and make pretend that somebody called me and told me that my mother or daughter were killed. And I know that's very dark and I apologize, but it's really what I do. I literally am able to, at my deepest, most struggling moment within business, take a step back and remind myself that I can make a trillion dollars tomorrow on Bitcoin and, and if something bad happened to the people I love the most, that it would mean nothing. And it very consistently rewires me very quickly. I just put business in perspective. At the end of the day, you know, it's, it's money. For me, it's not really money, it's my legacy, so I get hurt by it a little bit more. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, you know, I put it in perspective, it's money. And you know what, up until I had a daughter, even while I was married, up until when I had Misha, four years ago, I secretly wanted to lose all my money. I had this weird, twisted, dark fantasy of losing everything just to rise again like a phoenix and remind you I'm a humongous believer that ideas are shit and that execution's the game, right? We've all got ideas. Everybody's got ideas. Do you mean ideas we all have here? We could probably sit here for the next two hours, draw them all out, record them, and predict the next 78 great startups over the next nine years. And So I think the thing that is another theme in entrepreneurship is there is way too much fodder brought to the idea. Uber was Magic Cab three years earlier. Uber is not an idea. Uber existed. It's called Magic Cab. But the guys that executed it sucked so they lost. So I think, you know, if there's any level of romance left in this room about your idea, I'd like to suffocate it. Because I think the actual situation is what you actually do with it. The ability to adjust is the entire game. Like, I'm so proud that I change my mind every day. My dad used to get so pissed when I was building Wine Library. He would always be like, he's like, he would say like, three months ago you said Ricky was gonna be the best employee. I'm like, I changed my mind, he's fire him. Or, or he's like, you said sparkling wine was important, now you just eliminated it from the key spot. I'm like, I changed my mind. Like, my ability to only be comfortable in massive chaos has been my biggest asset as an entrepreneur. Like, I would never take a note. But, I'm asking you one final thing. When you go home 
if this talk meant anything. And by the way, I fundamentally believe only three of you are gonna act on this talk, I do. Because what I talk about is ridiculously hard and massively frustrating and takes forever. You know, like everything that's good in life. If you do anything because of this keynote, there's only one thing I ask you to do. Because as zenny as I got, I'm a practical Here's what I want from you. When you go home, look yourself in the mirror and audit everything you and your business do. I promise you that if you audit from top to bottom of expenses and effort and time and energy and payroll and all that if you audit all of it, even the best of us, even the InBevs, which is the company that bought Budweiser, they built their whole business on like printing on both sides of the paper and all that horse Even the most efficient ones of us are doing 20% dumb shit. If you take that 8%, that 13%, that 16% of dumb shit that you're doing, paying that person that's not bringing any cultural value to your business, having that contract that you've just been in and you just renew because you're busy as fuck, whatever the fuck you're doing, if you take any piece of that percentage and you apply it to giving a fuck about your customer, it will be better for your business going forward because for the first time since we all lived in small towns where your reputation was the complete backbone of how you did business, for the first time because technology is bringing us back together in a small town, for the first time being good and caring and following up matters. It matters. How about doing something random act of kindness for a current customer, not the ones that unsubscribed or left? You know how you always do nice shit when they're going? How about while you've got them? Reallocate your thought process, I'm telling you, because the tools that the, is the umbrella of this, organiz, of this event are getting so good, so good. You know what that means? All that is about to become a commodity. Emotional EQ is going to dominate business over the next decade and I implore you to start paying attention. And oh, by the way, I'll leave you with this. You know what the best part is? It feels good. Thank you.